In this tutorial, we'll go through the dependencies necessary for bridging MetaTrader and external programming languages. We'll focus specifically on Python for this. However, all external programming languages that have supported bindings in ZeroMQ, the main component of the project, uh, can be used in exactly the same manner. In terms of dependencies, you'll first need, of course, the DWX ZeroMQ connector project that is accessible via github.com forward slash DarwinX. If you go to the main profile page for DarwinX Labs here, you'll see a repository called DWX ZeroMQ connector. Click on that and that will expose all the underlying readme as well as source code that is available to you, as well as dependencies that are available inside the dependencies folder. These dependencies include MQL ZMQ, which is uh, a work of art conducted by a Mr. Ding Li, who has his own GitHub profile here at Ding Matao. And he's kindly licensed his work under the Apache 2.0 license. This project uses MQL ZMQ and MQL for lib, both components of which are provided inside uh, MQL ZMQ master.zip that can be downloaded from the DarwinX GitHub repository. All code referenced herein that uses MQL ZMQ and MQL for lib has been appropriately uh, referenced for licensing and we've acknowledged copyright in each of the files. If you do use this or share this code with anyone else, please make sure you respect the terms of the copyright license as available from Digment House profile and reiterated over here on our own repository. The next thing we need to have is MetaTrader, the platform. And this can be acquired by visiting darwinx.com, logging into your account, and then visiting trading, followed by trading accounts, and then download trading platform, selecting MetaTrader 4. We are working on a version for MetaTrader 5, and at the present time, it is currently under testing. As soon as that testing and QA is complete, it will be open sourced on our GitHub repository as well. Click on MT4, and that will download the file to your default downloads directory, which in most web browsers is the user's downloads folder. Once you've done that, uh, we'll get to installation in the next tutorial, but for now, let's go back to the other dependencies. Inside MetaTrader 4, we'll need to deploy libzmq, libsodium, and mqlzmq. And all three of these files have been prepackaged for you inside the mqlzmq master.zip file that is available under dwx0mq connector forward slash dependencies on our GitHub page. In terms of programming languages, ZeroMQ has extensive support and a vibrant community of contributors who have produced bindings for several different programming languages. Ones to note are Python, C++, C Sharp, Java, as well as others such as C, Ruby, Go, Node.js, Erlang, F Sharp, Haskell, Perl, Rust, PHP, and several more. If you'd like a complete list of these bindings, please visit wiki.zeromq.org forward slash bindings colon underscore start. For each programming language specifically, let's go through the dependencies that you'll need in order to run the DWX ZeroMQ connector project. For Python, this is ZeroMQ. So let's go to the bindings and go through the language specific bindings. For Python, you'll need PyZMQ. If you happen to be using Anaconda and have done a default installation of Anaconda, PyZMQ will be installed by default. If you aren't using Anaconda, then of course you can install PyZMQ by initiating a call to pip install PyZMQ. There are several examples uh, for server and client applications on uh, this page that give you a brief idea of uh, how to go about using PyZMQ inside Python. Of course, if you'd like a more exhaustive example of how to use ZeroMQ uh, with Python, then uh, you can simply go over to the DWX ZeroMQ connector project, click on the latest version that is in publication here, visit the Python directory and go through the API. Here you'll find an exhaustive example of how to incorporate various messaging patterns and the ZeroMQ library into your Python applications. And this Python client application that's been provided to you here is fully functional in terms of all the commands and uh, features that you need in order to not only create a bridge using ZeroMQ to MetaTrader, but also allow you to do data exchange and input output between your external environment and MetaTrader. And we'll go through this in a lot more detail in future tutorials. Tutorials. For C++, if you happen to be using C++, then C++ comes with support via CPP ZMQ, ZMQPP, AZMQ, and CZMQPP. Each of these libraries have their own specific uh, features and properties, so head over to each and examine them as uh, suits your purposes. CPP ZMQ is a header-only C++ binding for libzmq. 
and uh, ZMQPP is a C++ binding for ZeroMQ uh, that is a high level library and it hides most of the C style interface core that ZeroMQ provides. There are quite a few header files and source files all residing in the directory and these are all provided under the MPL uh, version 2 license. Then AZMQ it provides boost ASIO um, style bindings for ZeroMQ and finally CZMQPP is a wrapper for CZMQ and this aims to be minimal, simple and consistent for users. For Java, there are JROMQ, JZMQ, and JCZMQ. And if you'd like more information on their particulars, then please visit uh, zeromq.org forward slash languages forward slash Java. And these three are listed here, along with where you can access them, where their GitHub profiles are, and uh, certain examples uh, of their usage. If you aren't using Python, C++, or Java, then please visit the bindings page that we showed you earlier and over there you can access more information about the binding specific to your programming environment, your programming language and any dependency libraries that you would need for implementing a client application for use with the DWX ZeroQ connector project. So that's it for dependencies. We'll now go into more detailed installation and configuration tutorials with the next one. And here we'll talk about how to install and configure MetaTrader, how to install and configure your Python environment for first use with the DWX ZeroMQ connector project. And we'll then run through example usage of how to combine the two, your external environment and your MetaTrader instance connected via ZeroMQ and demonstrate using uh, video tutorials that we've already done before, where we'll show you strategies that we've implemented using this framework. As always, if you enjoyed this presentation, please do consider sharing it with your social networks, colleagues, co-workers, and friends. And do subscribe to the Darwinx YouTube channel so you remain up to date with all future videos that will be released in this series and other topics discussed on Darwinx. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.